السلام عليكم um, my name is Badr Yahya I'm one of the uh, an emergency physician and a medical toxicologist I am gonna show you in a short video how to search uh, micromedic for micromedics for uh, toxin exposure whether uh, a medication or uh, a product um, I'll start by doing a Google search for micromedics so you type in micromedics all right, and the first thing you get is IBM uh, Watson Health Products uh, login. I would uh, click on that. This will take you to this page. <clears throat> you, on the right side, you click on Micromedics. You will need a username and password to uh, log in. Once you're logged in, you will have this home page with uh, a main uh, toolbar, uh, starting with home, drug interactions, IV compatibilities, drug ID, drug comparison, care notes, and a specific um, area for neonates and pediatrics. And uh, another area for other tools, which is very important for uh, toxicology. And in the, if you put your cursor on other tools, you will get Redbook, you will get the toxin drug products lookup, this is the one that you're probably going to use to look up most of the drugs and products. Um, in this video, I'll focus on this tox uh, and drug products uh, lookup. We'll also look at drug ID, and then we will look at some drug interactions because we get sometimes questions through the Boysen Center for uh, safety of using combination of drugs. All right, so let's start with looking up uh, uh, tox and drug products lookup. So you click on that. It will take you to this page with, um, I want to search for products or substance names, or there's another uh, way of searching the products. For example, other than the name, you can check by code, you can check by product ID, or you could look up active ingredients. So let's say we want to check the medication aspirin. and then you submit. So you here we have um, several results, including astaminophen aspirin combination or uh, acetyl salicylic acid, which is aspirin. So I'm gonna click on acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin. All right, here you will get uh, Boys Index Management, um, Hazard Response Management, and uh, Medical Management. So I'll go to Boys Index Management for salicylates. I click on it. All right, so it will take you to this page. Uh, the first thing, it's always, it will always show you that we assume that you have performed the basic life support measures. Okay, and then as a poison specialist um, or even as a physician, the first thing you want to know if someone get uh, overdosed on aspirin or, got or a child got exposed to aspirin is the range of toxicity. So you're gonna click first on the range of toxicity and this will show you uh, toxicity after acute ingestion, what's a toxic ingestion, how much is toxic. For example, here is 150 milligram per kilogram or 6.5 grams of aspirin. It will tell you if this was an oil of wintergreen of 98% saturation, what's toxic for a child that's less than six years or, the, or someone who's older than six years. It will tell you the fatality uh, a dose that could be fatal from the oil of winter green. It will give you the chronic ingestion and toxic dose after chronic ingestion. And it will also tell you the therapeutic doses. So this is very important if you have a patient who's at home and you get a call about an ingestion of aspirin and the ingestion is less than 150 milligram per kilogram, the child is well, then you can keep them at home. They don't have to go to the hospital. If the ingestion is uh, more than 150 milligram per kilogram or the child is symptomatic, then they would probably have to go to the hospital. So this will give you a rapid answer to uh, the, 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 the question. And then you, you will need to go to see what, the, what is the clinical effect of this exposure. You click on a clinical effect. It will show you the expected uh, symptoms. 
So that's here in the beginning, it will tell you the uses of salicylate, the pharmacology of salicylate, and then the toxicology. The mechanism of toxicity is explained here. The epidemiology, you probably are gonna go to um, what is then here with poisoning or exposure, what's mild to moderate toxicity, what are the symptoms that you're gonna see, GI upset, tinnitus, tachypnea, and respiratory alkalosis, then severe toxicity, metabolic acidosis, hyperpnea, and so on. And then it will talk about delayed toxicity. All right, so these are the things you might need to tell the family. For example, if the child did not ingest a dose that's uh, toxic, then they will ask you, what symptoms should I be worried about? You will tell them the patient, if the patient has a frequent vomiting, if, the, if they're old enough to tell you that they're having uh, um, abnormal sounds in their ears, or they, if they appear tachypnic or breathing fast, then they will need to go to the hospital. All right, and then, and the next thing that you may get asked about uh, from, especially from, uh, for calls from hospitals is what are the tests that I need to, to do and what should I monitor for? So you click on laboratory and monitoring, it will tell you what to do. A, monitor vital signs and mental status, uh, serious salicylate levels every two hours, basic metabolic workup uh, uh, every two hours, like um, electrolytes and renal function, venous blood gas every two hours. And then uh, the, the other tests that you might need to do, like a CBC um, coagulation profile if needed, and uh, CT brain if the patient is, CT scan of the brain if the patient has altered mental status. So it will tell you what um, tests might, might be needed and when. And then you can click on the treatment overview and it will give you everything that um, about the treatment, including the antidote, if there is antidote, um, urine, uh, for example, alkaline, uh, uh, urine alkalinization here and hemodialysis indications. Um, and then the patient disposition. So it will give you the whole details. So if, for example, if the hospital asks you for uh, the management details, you could print this and fax it to them or you could e uh, email it to them all right, so that's when we are searching, searching for a drug. Um, again, I'll go back to the same um, uh, other tools and we'll go back to toxin drug products. This time I will search, I won't search a drug, I will search a product. Let's say the child had exposure to Tide uh, pods and then I will submit my search. Again, it will give you different types of Tide pods and depending on what the call is about, you're gonna select which one uh, the child was exposed to, and then you're gonna click on it. It will give you what are the active ingredients of that substance here, the pH, which is very useful for us. And then you can go to poison index management and you click on that. it will give you the same um, um, tools that we have looked up uh, for aspirin. Again, we'll start with the range of toxicity. It will tell you what, what, what is expected. Uh, inadvertent exposure usually results in mild, transient irritation. Most of these patients usually will stay home unless they have significant symptoms, it will give you all the details that you need to know. And then the clinical effects, the laboratory monitoring and overview, exactly the same as for aspirin. Um, all right, so we're done with these. I'm just gonna go and look up, let's say you get a call about a, a product or, a, or a, a medication that you're not sure what is it, but you have a tablet or you have a picture, then you can click on a drug ID. It will take you to this, um, search box you can if the if the if this if the product has an imprint or a drug has a tablet has an imprint on it for example let's say it has a q then you could search with that imprint um if if it has uh, more than one then you can uh, put the two of them here and the, the the other one in the other search box and then you can search okay for q i've got so many imprints i can see which one matches the one in front of me and, and, and select the product. For example, Q100 is quetiapine, and uh, I could click on it and get the details of what is the, uh, the medication, what the medication is, and I could take the name and search it again with the 
uh, with the uh, toxin drug product lookup. All right. If I don't have an imprint, I can go back to drug ID and here no imprint code, no imprint code. Search by click here to search by description. You click on to search by des description. Let's say the the tablet is blue and the shape of it is circle and the pattern is solid. It's a solid circle blue tablet. I'm not sure what it is. Make sure that show image um, a tick box is ticked because you want to see the images and, uh, and see if it matches what you, uh, the, the tablet in front of you, then you search. So here it gives me two type of tablets, M over 11 score, whatever. It said doxaz um or in Alabrel. So it depends on which one is closer to what I'm looking at. I you could click on this and then you get the details of the product. It will show you also the picture, enlarged picture. So that's for doxazosine. Close this, I can click on the other one, the Inalabrel. Okay, again. And here's the picture of it. E um, uh, ME17, sorry, I'm gonna go back to doxazosine. Here, MD11, that's doxazosine. So this could be useful if you're not sure what the, um, the tablet is. Um, the last feature that I wanna show you is the drug interaction. Sometimes we get calls about, calls about drug interactions. And here, if you click on a drug interaction, you can search for interaction between cert certain drugs. I would say, for example, warfarin and add warfarin to the search box. And then let's say doxycycline, someone was needed antibiotics and he's already on warfarin. So doxycycline and then submit. All right, so we have a moderate interaction between um, warfarin and doxycycline. Uh, this will describe, will tell you what kind of, what does moderate mean? So contraindicated, uh, if, if, it's, if the drugs cannot be mixed together, then it will tell you contraindicated, or if there is major interaction, tell you major and give you the sign. Moderate is the one that we got, then minor or unknown interaction. I'll close this. So we have moderate interaction. I want to know, uh, and it will tell you here that current use of warfarin and doxycycline will result in increased uh, in uh, increased risk of bleeding. And if I want the details, I will click on the um, blue link there. It will tell me that increased risk of bleeding and this is the clinical management that you need to do. And the onset, when, when, they, when would the uh, complication happen? Um, the, the increased risk of bleeding is delayed as we know. And then what kind of severe, what kind of um, uh, complications we're going to get. Is it moderate or severe? This one is moderate and uh, and so on. So that will be very useful uh, for drug-drug uh, interactions. I hope you find this video um, useful and uh, there are a lot of things that you can look up through Micromedics, um, but this is meant to be a short uh, overview for the poison uh, information specialist. Uh, thank you and have a nice day.